Hello, today on If, is there a heaven and a hell? Religion plays a huge part in many people's lives. It guides people towards good behavior. If you're bad, when you die, you will go to a bad place. If you're good, then things are a little more rosy. Each religion has its own take on the afterlife. But what if heaven and hell are real? Let's take a look at the final destination depending on how we have lived. So we have only the two choices, right? Well, not so fast. Just hold on one second. It isn't that simple. Heaven is regarded as a place of paradise, usually way up in the sky. It's full of your deceased family and loved ones, a realm where all dreams can come true. Hell is the opposite, full of our worst fears, a place of torment, an eternity of pain and suffering. The question of the afterlife is as complicated as religion itself. Heaven and hell mean different things to different people. It all depends on your faith. So let's take a look at the big five religions. What do they have to say about it? Let's begin with the oldest current religion practiced on the planet, Hinduism. The Puranas teach Hindus that there are 14 worlds that make up the universe. These are divided into seven upper and seven lower levels. The seven upper worlds are Bha, Bhava, Swa, Maha, Jana, Tapa and Satyam. And the seven underworlds or netherworlds are Atala, Vitala, Sotala, Rasatala, Talatala, Mahatala and Patala. My apologies to my Hindu friends for my terrible pronunciation. The earth is known as Boa, while Swa is the celestial world where people travel to repair after death. This is where they can enjoy the fruits of a righteous actions on earth. Then there is Bhuva, the region between the two. Jana, Tapa and Satyam make up the Brahmolaka. This is the highest heaven. So what's left is the underworld. This is known as Maha. It is located between Brahmolaka and Bo, Boa, Swa and Patala, the lowest of the seven netherworlds. This is the realm where the wicked souls reap the rewards of their unrighteous acts on the earth. So from a Hindu viewpoint, heaven and hell are merely just different worlds. These worlds teaching Hindus what they need to learn about life so they can be reincarnated. Every time they are reincarnated, more lessons are learned. The Katha Upanishad says, When all desires that dwell in the heart fall away, then the mortal becomes immortal and here attains Brahman. The next religion we're going to look at is Buddhism. Buddhism finds its origins in Hinduism, but Buddhists do believe something different. They do not accept that there is an eternal damnation or a heavenly existence. Buddhists believe it's unfair to send a soul to eternal hell because human weakness gives a person the chance to develop themselves. Buddhists see it as a situation where if you learn and better your, your being, by making merit, then there is no reason for suffering to last forever. The Buddha's teachings showed that heaven and hell are all places that are created by people's wants and desires. Buddhism teaches that hell comes from anger, lust or greed and ignorance. The Buddha taught that we are burning from 11 kinds of physical pain and mental agony, lust, hatred, illusion, sickness, decay, death, worry, lamentation, pain, both physical and mental, melancholy and grief. To simplify, hell is of our making and we can live it every day if we so choose. Buddhists believe the same as Hindus that birth, death and rebirth are a cycle. When we have learned all that is needed to learn, we can reach enlightenment and become one with all things. Buddhists practice their religion without aiming for a heaven or without fear of a hell. 
So let's have a look at Judaism. The Jewish faith has the belief of heaven and hell, and they share a lot of parallels to the concepts of Christianity. Judaism is however the older religion and there are differences. In the Torah there are references to a place called Sheol. It tells of a region that is dark and deep, a pit and a land of forgetfulness where human beings descend after death. The suggestion is that the neverworld of Sheol, the deceased or low cut off from God and humankind live on some kind of shadowy state of existence. It's based on their view of reality. They see earth as a flat disk floating in water with the heavens above and the underworld below. But there are newer views and they see the earth as a sphere at the center of a set of seven concentric heavens, one for each of the visible planets plus the sun and the moon, with the realm of God in the eighth and the highest heaven. So let's take a quick look at Islam. Muslims believe in the soul and that it will be eternal. Muslims follow the idea of a transformed physical existence after death. Islam teaches that there will be a day of judgment when all humans will be divided between their eternal destinations of paradise and hell. Until this judgment day, the deceased souls remain in the graves awaiting for their resurrection. However, they begin to feel immediately a taste of their own destiny to come. Those bound for hell will suffer in their graves while those bound for heaven will be in peace until that time. One's eternal destination depends on the balance of good and bad deeds carried out throughout your life. They are either granted a mission to paradise where they will enjoy spiritual and physical pleasures forever or condemned to hell to suffer spiritual and physical torment for the whole of eternity. Christianity It probably has the most common concept of an afterlife. Christians believe that when they die they go into an intermediate state, a transitional period, heaven. It's the place Christians go when we die. This is an intermediate state or location. It is temporary. Christians believe they are God's children and are destined for a life as a resurrected being on a resurrected earth. Hell is seen as a lake of fire. The book of Revelation reads, The beast and the false prophet are thrown into the lake alive, and the devil is banished there to be tormented forever with the beasts and the false prophet, neither place being for an eternity but until the world is made anew. Ok so now we have some ideas of where we will go if we follow one of these faiths, but what gets us in the doors to the happy afterlife? Or what can we do to doom ourselves to perpetual nightmare tailored to our own personal fear? All religions teach us the same basic values. We should love our fellow man, we should be good and kind, we should not cause suffering or carry out bad deeds. But each of these religions has its own rules and guides, a long list of things we could do to guarantee a happy final destination. For example, in Buddhism it is better to be born a man. Buddhists believe it is easier to reach enlightenment via being a male. A woman can reach enlightenment but they can never be a female Buddha. Before the Chinese communists took over Tibet they practiced polandry where one woman would have multiple husbands, usually all brothers. Buddhists also hate porn. Almost every country with a Buddhist tradition has made porn illegal. If you're a fan of those adult sites, maybe Buddhism is not for you. Suicide can also be a guaranteed trip to the warm place in most religions, but it's a little different in Hinduism. There was a time when suicide was a common theme of several traditions of ancient India. Self-immolation, followers would discard their frail bodies in the search of liberation. The body was considered karmic fruit and burning it away at the end of a prolonged self-purification process was considered a good option to resolve any past karma. In the past Indian warriors were in fact unafraid of death 
For them going to the battlefield meant death and they fought valiantly with the sole objective of dying. This idea is similar to that of the Vikings and their heaven Valhalla. However, while ritual suicide was permitted under extraordinary circumstances, Hindu traditions and custom as a rule do not permit killing of any kind and suicide is no exception. They clearly warn that the consequences of ending one's life since it's a mortal sin are really bad for your karma. The Jewish faith has a laundry list of do's and don'ts. There are 613 commandments that they must keep in order to be considered a good Jew. Far too many for us to list here, but for non-Jews there is good news. You only have 7 laws of Noah to follow. As long as you can keep to those you get a place in heaven. So here they are. 1. Do not deny God. 2. Do not blaspheme God. 3. Do not murder. 4. Do not engage in illicit sexual relations. 5. Do not steal. 6. Do not eat from a live animal. 7. Establish courts, legal systems to ensure obedience to said laws. For Muslims, it seems Allah Almighty forgives pretty much all sins except idol worshipping and the Trinity beliefs. The Noble Quran states, Allah forgiveth, not that partners should be set upon with him, but he forgiveth anything else, to whom he pleaseth. To set up partners with Allah is to devise a sin most heinous indeed. Therefore Islam forms a direct relationship between a Muslim and his creator Allah Almighty. As long as a Muslim believes in one true God and is faithful. And last but not least Christianity. The Christians have the Ten Commandments to follow. The word of God given to Moses. Follow those and for most forms of Christianity you can go straight to heaven. So you've made your choice, you're going to follow the teachings of one of the big five, but we're still not sure if it's true. You're a little on the fence. Most enjoy a little naughtiness from time to time. Is this going to be the end of all the fun? Can we 100% guarantee an afterlife? Some say that they have passed on and they have seen the other side. NDEs or near death experiences are when someone has been dead for a period of time and travelled to the world beyond. In January 1991, Angie Fenimore attempted suicide. She claims to have visited hell before being saved. She said she was shown a life review. She had to relive her entire life as a series of images. She then entered hell. She said that in the beginning there was an endless darkness. She was with a group of other young people whom she refers to as the suicides. She also spent time in a different part of hell where there were lost souls rambling through a field too miserable to interact with one another. Another strange tale is that of Howard Storm. Howard was a lifelong atheist until he had an NDE. He almost died from a perforated stomach in June of 1985. He says he woke in a hospital bed and then realized that he was a ghost. It is then a group of figures led him into a dark hallway filled with a thick fog. He followed these figures down the hallway. He struggled to keep up. These shadowy demons then turned on him and began eating his flesh. As he was tormented, a voice in his head told him, pray to God. Howard had never prayed before. He tried his best and he says his prayers saved his life. After his near-death experience, Storm became a Christian minister. So maybe some proof of hell, but what about heaven? I'm sure most of us would prefer to be there. In 1973, a 31-year-old mother of seven, Betty Eady, says she went to heaven. She states that as she lay on a hospital bed after a hysterectomy, she found herself floating out of her body. She was guided into a dark tunnel and flew toward a bright light that radiated unconditional love. She saw other beings with which she communicated telepathically and was shown around and her life reviewed. She says she was told that she had died before her time and her work was not yet done. She must return to earth. Then she found herself suddenly back in the hospital bed. Another visitor to heaven was Colton Burple 
who was one of the most popular stories of 2014. His story was detailed in a film, Heaven is for Real, which showed Burple's struggle with sickness and the battle with life and death and what he experienced in heaven. He said that Jesus spoke to him and he learned about his sister who had died before he could even meet her. And finally Don Piper died for 40 minutes after a head on collision back in 2008. According to an interview he gave to Fox News commentator Bill O'Reilly, he said he went to heaven where he was greeted by family and friends outside the gates. He didn't see God or Jesus but he spent the time there with his family members who he said hadn't aged. Piper said that he went towards the gates of heaven before he suddenly woke up. So there are witnesses to the afterlife. But I think we don't need to be religious devotees, we just need to live a good life. If you really think about it, memory is the best way to ensure a happy afterlife. Whatever may come, I'm sure when the Grim Reaper comes knocking, we would like to think that we have left happy thoughts with the people we love. With that in mind, no matter what faith you are, I think that the world may just be a little nicer if we treated each other with more love and respect. We may be uncertain about life after death, but one thing is for sure, we're all going to find out sooner or later. We can't know when or how so the best we can do is think about today. If you feel you need to call someone and tell them how you feel, go for it. If you feel that you have been slacking off and not doing your best in showing people that you love them, call those friends and family. Change it now. Make your own heaven here on earth. As for the afterlife, well, let that be what it will be. We will all find out in the end. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment, maybe throw us a like or ring that little bell or be super kind and give us a sub. Till next time.